Good evening, everyone. Uh, we begin the readout tonight in the halls of Congress, hallowed, revered, sacred to some, but also historically pretty violent. Back in the bad old days, between 1830 and 1860, members of Congress engaged in at least 80 acts of physical violence, something we know thanks to historian Joanne Freeman. In the three decades before the Civil War, when debates about slavery dominated politics, you pretty much needed a bodyguard and a black belt in something, anything, to survive serving in the Capitol. It was actually pretty wild. According to the New Republic's review of Freeman's book, congressmen, back then they were all men, quote, routinely threatened each other with violence and often acted on it, too. They brawled on the House floor. They faced off in duels. In 1859, an anti-slavery senator from Massachusetts was beaten unconscious during a caning by a pro-slavery South Carolinian. A caning! So fast forward to 2022, and before you can say, well, canes aren't a thing anymore, keep in mind that metal detectors are. And that not too long ago, armed rioters overtook these hallowed halls to demand that legislators be lynched. They even brought a noose. Congress, as we now know, has never really been the safest place to work. Altercations are growing as the Republican Party continues to embrace thuggy behavior as its guiding light. We saw another heated exchange this week between Congresswoman Joyce Beatty of Ohio and Congressman Hal Rogers of Kentucky. Beatty, who is chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, ran into Rogers outside her congressional office. Rogers was not wearing a mask when they entered an elevator. Beatty told the Associated Press she asked Rogers to put on his mask, to which he grudgingly agreed. But then, when the two lawmakers crossed paths again, entering a train in the Capitol complex, the interaction turned hostile. Beatty said she asked Rogers again to put his mask on, to which Rogers, quote, poked me in the middle of my back and said, get on the train. Beatty responded, don't you ever touch me. According to Beatty, Rogers replied, kiss my behind. He didn't say behind. In a video taken by her office, Beatty can be heard confronting Rogers on the train. Now, you can't see them right away, but just take a listen. Now, in case you couldn't hear that very well, that was Congresswoman Beatty saying to Rogers, I'm a member of Congress like you, and I'm a woman. You will not disrespect me. You picked the wrong woman for that. Less than two hours after all 56 members of the Congressional Black Caucus stood on the steps of the House and demanded an apology, Congressman Hal Rogers did just that. He tweeted, this afternoon, I met with Representative Beatty to personally apologize. My words were not acceptable, and I expressed my regret to her first and foremost. And joining me now is Congresswoman Joyce Beatty of Ohio, chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, and Congresswoman, thank you so much for being here. I have to say that w when I saw that video, when uh, my uh, producer sent it to me, I thought to myself, that's every black mom, every black auntie, every black mother of the church, you inhabited and embodied that in that moment. He should have known what he was getting into when he tried you. He did try you. He did apologize. Talk a little bit more about the engagement between the two of you. Did he call you? Was it, in your view, connected to the protest, really, in, on your behalf by this, the entire CBC? Well, first of all, thank you, Joy, for inviting me here. Yes, I think it was a culmination of a, a lot of things. That one, I had said to him face to face, I wanted an apology. I did go to our sergeant at arms and all of our leadership team and told them that I was not going to stand for this. He was going to come to the House floor and apologize to me. And later, he had told several of his members that, you know, I messed up. And he then came to the floor without a mask to tell me that he was apologizing. And I said to the leadership, I'm not accepting this. The Congressional Black Caucus was very angry. And as you mentioned, they went out on the Capitol steps and demanded an apology. So then I told him, for as Speaker Pelosi has said many times, if you insult a high profile, then you have to give a high profile apology. And that's when he went to social 
social media and to the networks and apologized. I've accepted yeah. the public apology because there's so much work for me to move on. And I'm a leader. I'm not someone like what we're dealing with in this hyper-partisan uh, environment of not really having real leadership on the other side of the aisle. Yeah. And, you know, I, I went into a deep dive today just on the, the, the history of, you know, violence, uh, even, you know, on the floor of Congress. I mean, this is not something that's, that's alien to the body, but it does definitely feel like it's gotten uglier in recent years. I mean, we had um, AOC, uh, you know, called the B word by a fellow member of Congress. Um, we've had, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene scream at other members, um, you sort of menace other members. It's, it's become a thing that people are doing. Do you think it's materially different in Congress now? And do you think it has something to do with the politics in that other party? Oh, I, I think definitely. It's different from when I first got there, which wasn't that long ago. I think now, after the last presidential administration, uh, people follow their leadership. You saw what happened on January the 6th. I mean, that's unbelievable. When we look back at history that we lived uh, through that, it's unthinkable. And that's why it's important for us to stand up and to, man, to demand civility and to respect the decorum of the House floor or the Congress, and it's unacceptable. And it's also a form of being bullied. And everyone who knows me, I'm not going to be bullied. And yeah. the Congressional Black Caucus, I've never been more proud of them and our Democratic leadership.